Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday the 25th of May and today Mojang released the second snapshot for Minecraft 1.10, this one labeled Minecraft 16W21A. It is a mainly a bug fix snapshot, but it has a few interesting changes as well. My name is Sliced Lime, let me give you a comprehensive look at the changes in this version. Let's start off with the general gameplay fixes. They have fixed a bug where their fishing rods would not be able to pull items dropped on the ground. Which means that now you can use the fishing rod as a kind of grappling hook to reel in items that you can't reach. Pretty cool. They also fixed minecarts not picking up entities. However, this was apparently a fairly scary fix. So if you're a redstoner and you use minecarts in one of your contraptions, then please test this change out. Open it in the snapshot test it out, make sure that it still works, and make sure to report any problems to the Minecraft issue tracker. Another gameplay fix that is fairly important, if you were flying, gliding on Ultra, and you disconnected from the server or re-logged into your single player world, then you would drop out of the sky. That has now been fixed, so now if you re-log you will keep flying. A few smaller fixes as well, if you put a non-air block in the middle of an ender portal and tried to activate it, you couldn't. And you also couldn't shift click a shield into the shield slot from the inventory that is now fixed. Here's a change to the debug screen, the F3 screen. This was actually added in the previous snapshot, 16W20A, but it wasn't discovered until after I'd made my update video, so here it is. Pressing F3 and G will bring up a debug mode where you can see lines outlining the chunk boundaries. Very useful if you're building something technical that depends on the chunk boundaries. Let's move into talking about mobs and AI fixes. The new polar bears added in the last snapshot were having some AI issues. They could get stuck in the standing position they have when attacking a target if the target disappeared or died while attacking it. That is now fixed along with another problem where they would be stuck inside blocks when trying to chase down a player. Other mobs fixes as well, the wolf's tail height would not be based on the ratio of health to max health, that is now fixed, along with another long-standing problem with the wolves, being that wolves that haven't been tamed would disappear after a while. They would despawn like mobs and that has now been fixed. Some pathfinding fixes as well, mobs would not avoid magma blocks so that they would walk straight on top of them and take damage. I must say I'm not quite sure about this fix because to me they look like they clearly still do. And horse and donkey pathfinding could sometimes treat one block elevations as non-traversable. This is a fix we've seen before on the 1.9 line of development, apparently it wasn't completely fixed so now it's fixed again. Final mob or AI fix for the day is skeletons, witches, blazes, guardians and snowmen would not be able to shoot while inside a boat. That is now fixed, so now you can have your own naval snowman again. Maybe not the best of sharpshooters, mind. Some world generation fixes in this version as well. The surface level mineshafts would generate outside of the mesa biomes and that has now been sorted out. And the savannah villages would have blacksmith lava pits made out of wood causing the villages to burn down. That has now been fixed as well. There's also a fix to the built-in world upgrade process. Cooked fish would not properly import and could be changed. That has now been fixed, so if you open an old world with cooked fish in it, this is your lucky day. Let's move over into map making and commands. The structure block didn't save properly in the previous snapshot, and that has now been fixed. There's also an issue where structure blocks would melt snow and eye close by because they were a light source. They are no longer a light source, structure blocks now have a light level of zero, which both fixes this bug and makes sure that we don't get a lot of unnecessary lighting updates. There's also a new feature in the structure block in this snapshot. They now have structure integrity and see the fields in the load version of the structure block. Those are used to randomize decay in structure blocks. The structure integrity is a value between 0 and 1 interpreted as the percentage of the structure to load. So if this is set at 0.5, only 50% of the blocks in the structure will be loaded. The selection of these blocks is random and the random seed is controlled by, you guessed it, the seed field. 
The fix for relogging when flying with Elytra have actually had a very very interesting side effect for command blockers. It has introduced a new fall flying NBT tag and that tag is available on all living things. That means that we can now summon mobs and have them automatically fly with Elytra again which again makes possible various numbers of techniques such as raycasting using the wings. Amazingly good news for everybody who was sad when the jump to deploy Elytra feature was implemented. The teleport change in the previous snapshot, we now have confirmation that that is indeed an intended change. I will be making a more thorough update on what I think about that and also a full tutorial on what the change actually means later on. But for now, let's move on. There was a problem in the execute detect version of the execute command, causing entities within a chunk to have their scoreboard scores reset that has now been fixed. As well as bugs for the insertion tag for Telro not working on servers and being unable to teleport from any vehicle. In the previous snapshot there is a new particle called falling dust. It is the particle used for suspended blocks that will fall if updated. However, the particle did not work with the slash particle command, and it now does. So now there is a falling dust particle for your enjoyment. There's a bunch of rendering fixes as well. Signs, banners, skulls and chests would flash when there was an item spawner nearby. XP orb texture would turn grey right before reaching a player. A small rendering issue on block boundaries in F3 mode. And ender crystal beams would render backwards when used with the beam target property. However, there also seems to be a fair number of problems with the renderer in this version. The lava texture is entirely changed, making it look more like blood than lava. I believe this has now been confirmed as being a bug, so no more bloody hell. In addition to that, there's some small internal fix in a random destination routine, meaning that the chance that things would move north was slightly higher than the other directions, and a crash fix. And that concludes our rundown of the fixes for this version. If you want to try this out, then be a bit careful, it is a snapshot, it can corrupt your world or crash your game. So test it out on a test world or on a backup of your world. To get it running, head into your Minecraft launcher, create a new profile and select Enable Experimental Development Versions Snapshots. Now save, select that profile from the drop-down box and start the game. You will now be playing the latest snapshot version, which is currently this one, 16w21a. If you want to find out more about updates in previous snapshots, then head on over to my Minecraft news playlist. There's a link on screen and in the video description. That has update videos for all new snapshots and versions. That's it for this time, my name is Sliced Lime. thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye bye.